Hello everyone, welcome to another Computercraft Lua lesson. Thank you for being patient, as I haven't uploaded for the last two weeks. Two weeks ago was supposed to be a chance for me to take a break and get some stuff done in advance. And then the following week, my Windows 10 install got corrupted by a bad Windows update, and I've been trying to recover from that ever since. Things didn't go according to plan at all, but at least I didn't lose any of my data, and now I'm finally back in business. Up until now, I've been showing you how to create and process data created in variables but there may be times where the user may need to intervene and give information. That's where the read function comes in. The read function is super simple. It allows you, the user, to input any text to the program. In order to use this, you will need to either pass it as an argument to a function or if statement, or set it as a variable, which is much more viable. With the variable, you can then use the user's information in any way you want. You can concatenate it with another string, add it to a table, or even convert it to a number if you're trying to take number inputs. In order to convert user input to a number though, you'll need an extra step. By default, any input the user gives with read is taken as a string. If the user inputs a number, Lua will automatically convert your string to a number if you try to do math on it. However, you won't be able to compare your user input of 5 to the number 5 because the user input is not a number. To convert your string to a number, you will need to pass the user input to the toNumber function. toNumber will convert any string to a number as long as the string contains no other text than numbers. If the string has anything other than numbers, then toNumbers will return nil. On the flip side, you can use toString to convert anything to a string. This one is not just for numbers, you can convert any data type to a string with this. And you will absolutely need to if you want to concatenate anything other than a number to a string. For example, if you try to concatenate a string with a boolean, the program will throw an error. However, if you use toString on the boolean, it will work. The same goes for a table or nil, and yes, you can convert nil to a string that says nil. Numbers, however, can be concatenated just fine without conversion. You probably won't want to convert tables to strings because this is what you'll get. There is a way to convert the data in a table into one big string, but that requires something else that I will cover in a future lesson. Since we're on the topic of strings, I want to review strings from Lesson 1-3 for a minute. As I've explained, a string is a data type that is defined by wrapping text inside of either single or double quotation marks. Because of this nature, you can't have a single and double quote inside the same string. You'd have to concatenate two strings. That's not actually entirely true. There is another way to put the two symbols together. If you've played around with strings, you may have noticed that you can't use the backslash symbol, and when you do, stuff goes weird. Whoa. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Didn't expect that. That's because the backslash is used to put special symbols into a string that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. If you put backslash double quote inside of a double quoted string, the print function will print the double quote correctly without the backslash. You can do the same exact thing with a single quotation mark. And that's not all, you can also have a string print to a new line without writing another print function. To do this, you put backslash n. This will insert the new line symbol to the string. You can also do backslash r, which the Lua manual calls a carriage return, but on screen, it appears like a space, so I'm not entirely sure of its purpose. Maybe you guys can figure it out for yourselves. Backslash T will add an indent to the string, which you can't really see right now, but it's there. I promise you it's there. I promise you it's there. It exists, I swear. Backslash A puts a large dot on the screen. Backslash B puts what I'd call an inverted dot. Looks like a block with a hole in it. Backslash F and backslash V puts the symbols for the female and male genders respectively. If you want to put a backslash in the string, you just do backslash backslash. You can also do backslash open and backslash close square bracket for the square brackets. But that confused me because you can already put those two symbols into the string without the backslash. Well, I looked into it a bit and I found out there's something called a long string. Instead of using quotation marks, you use two square brackets to create a long string. A long string is just a string, but it allows you to define the string with more than one line without using slash n, whereas a normal string must be defined on one single line. This is where the backslash open and backslash close square brackets would be necessary. Concatenation does seem to still work with long strings as well. 
Before I end this lesson, there's one more thing I need to go over, and that's the Pastebin program. This is a pre-installed program that interfaces with a website that exists on the actual internet. Pastebin is a website that allows you to post a text document or program source code. You can post as a guest, but you won't be able to edit or delete the paste afterwards. You can create an account and you can save paste to your account and edit or delete them later. You can post them privately, but there's a limit to how many private pastes you can make without paying a premium. Public pastes are unlimited, however. With the Pastebin program in Computercraft, you can have your programs be automatically posted publicly as a guest by typing pastebin put and the name of the file you want to post. The URL will be shown on screen, so just go to that URL if you want to see the post. You unfortunately can't edit the post, but you can clone and save a copy of the post to your account. There's no way to post your programs to your account with a Pastebin program. It may be possible if you make your own program using Pastebin's API, but you'll have to figure that out on your own until I get to the lessons about the internet and computer craft. In addition to uploading the Pastebin, this program can also download from Pastebin. To do so, you type Pastebin get, followed by the code for the post, followed by the file name you want to save the program to. The code for downloading the file is the string of numbers and letters following the pastebin.com slash in the URL. Alternatively, you can also run the code directly from Pastebin without saving the program to a file. Type pastebin run, followed by the code, followed by any arguments the program may take. The reason why I needed to teach you about Pastebin in this lesson is because the next video I upload will be our first coding challenge. As I said at the start of lesson 1-1, every once in a while I'll be setting up a special challenge for you guys to practice what you've learned so far in these lessons. I'll give you a set of instructions and you'll need to make a program based around those instructions. I've shown you Pastebin so that you guys can post and share the programs you made in the comments section. The challenge is not required, it's not a pop quiz or a test or anything, and you won't be graded because this isn't a school. But I'd like to see what you create and give you feedback on your code if you want it. The details for the first coding challenge will be coming out next week, so I hope to see you all then. As always, if you have any questions about this lesson, please ask in the comment section, and thank you so much for watching.